You know, ever since I got back from vacation this week, I've been going through my email, and there's one topic that keeps coming up again and again and again. That's this active shooter situation at the Walmart. This Joseph Wilcox, this concealed carrier that confronted an active shooter and lost his life doing so. People keep asking me questions about this guy, like, do I think he did the right thing or the wrong thing? Should he have not gotten involved? Should he have done something differently? Is there something to learn from this? Is this a reflection on all concealed carry? And what do I think about how the media has been portraying this incident? Well, first off, let's address how the media has been portraying it. Well, at first, I was really disgusted at how many people in the media were kind of smirking when they did this story. It was almost like they were like, hey, look at this guy carrying a gun, just proves carrying a gun doesn't do any good. You know, it was almost like they were enjoying the fact that this guy lost his life trying to save other people. They weren't being very respectful of this guy at all, and that kind of bothered me. Now, I've seen they've backed off a little bit of it lately. I think they kind of got shamed into it. I think they got a lot of negative response from the way they were acting. But at first, they seemed really snarky about it. Which I don't understand, especially when they start saying, well, he made things worse, and he could have made things more complicated for law enforcement when they showed up. If someone runs into a burning building to save a child, and they die doing so, well, that probably inconveniences the firefighters that come later because they have to deal with this guy and the child now. But the media wouldn't be like, oh, this asshole ran into a building and got himself killed and caused problems for firefighters. They'd be like this valiant, brave hero rushed into a burning building with no thought to his own life and sacrificed himself to save a child. They wouldn't go any deeper than that. They would just portray the guy as a hero. But because there's a gun involved this time, they want to demonize the guy, even if it's kind of a backhanded demonization. Now, as for what Joseph Wilcox did right or wrong, I don't want to get into that too much. I don't want to second-guess someone who sacrificed their life trying to help others. Now, we can learn something from this, though. We can learn that the number one thing in a situation like this is situational awareness. Know what's going on around you. Don't make yourself a target if you don't have to. Like I've said many times in the past, my gun is protect my family and myself. If I go further than that and I protect others with it, I still have to protect myself first. If I get myself killed trying to protect others, not only did I not protect them, I sacrificed myself. So I have to know what's going on. In this situation, he should have gotten to a safe distance. The person was firing in the air telling everyone to get out. Get out. Get away. If he's not actively shooting someone, run. If you can get to a safe distance and then assess the situation, do so. He chose to approach the guy, and unfortunately, he found himself stuck between two shooters. He didn't know the second shooter existed. In this situation, he could have been a guy that practiced with his gun every day. He could have been a quick-draw expert that could put five rounds dead center in two seconds. He still wouldn't have survived the situation because there was someone right behind him with a gun pointed at him that took him down from behind because he didn't know they were there. So no amount of training with your gun would have solved that problem. This is what he needed to exercise right then and there. I've always maintained that in these situations, it's the guy that can think under pressure, the guy that's aware of his surroundings, the guy that can formulate a plan of attack that deals with the circumstances he's under. That's the guy that has the better chance of survival, the guy that knows he has to use his brain before he uses his trigger finger, even if he's just an adequate gun owner. If his skills with his gun are nothing impressive, they're just basic, he still has a better chance of surviving than someone who's an expert with their gun that doesn't think first, someone that takes unnecessary risks. So when you come into these situations, the number one lesson is use your brain, be aware of what's going on around you. So there are some lessons to learn from his unfortunate circumstances. Be aware of what's going on. Don't put yourself in a dangerous situation where you don't know everything that's going on. You don't know what else is around you. Get to safety first. Analyze the situation from a safe distance if at all possible. As far as a reflection on all concealed carry, no, it's not a reflection on all concealed carry because there's several incidents of concealed carriers doing the right thing, being smart, stopping situations. It happens all the time. You don't hear about it in the media because it isn't sensational, but it happens. This is just an unfortunate incident. And finally, for what I think of Joseph Wilcox himself, you know, I've always thought that it doesn't matter how many battles you win or lose in your life. It's that you're willing to fight. And one thing you can say about Joseph Wilcox, whether he did everything perfect or not, he was willing to fight. He was willing to fight for himself. He was willing to fight for others. Win or lose, if you ask me, that alone makes a person a hero. real day.